Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Trunkhead with Trunkhead Gaming. Today I'll be doing uh, G-Man Division 4 and 5 reviews. Uh, so if you're a regular follower of the stream, you probably haven't followed these teams. That's fine. He, um, Motley usually takes care of this. He's uh, busy with some real life stuff. So I'm going to jump in and uh, just get you guys up to speed on what's going on with these uh, last couple weeks. And get to where you're going right now. Uh, so let's start with uh, G-Man Division 5. Uh, so I haven't played many games this week. Only uh, Baywork Bricklayers versus Drop Dead Gore Juice. Uh, and forewarning, I'm about as uh, about as American as apple pie, which means I will probably be, be unable to announce uh, a fair number of coach names and team names and player names. So um, sorry about that. So let's go ahead and check out last week's first. I'm gonna skip uh, week two because it's well, we can kind of go over it. Well, it's not. It's not. So week three. Which is the kind of the current week. We got Mad Stoppers 0-2. Was that a no 0-2 uh, versus the Bricklayers uh, Chaos Monks 1-2. Let's check this game out. Actually, this was an admin. Mad Stoppers must be a uh, must be a bye week team then. Mighty Reptiles versus Chaos Monks it ended up being a two to one to the to the Lizard team there. Priest of Fire, he got MVP. What's his injury? Oh, just an MNG. So he gets the is the MVP and he picked up block, but um he's gonna miss his next game. Uh, and then uh, Guy Germain, he ended up getting sidestep with his MVP, so that's all right for him. Six armor breaks to 11. Uh, that's actually it's pretty rough. <laughs> that's pr that's kind of a beaten by the lizards there. Uh, 39 blocks on both sides, but the removals were doubled up on the for the lizards. Uh, I, w I wonder why, like. The Lizards have a, a bunch of have four to five AV7 pieces, so I'm kind of surprised that the Chaos Monks didn't get some more damage in there. Uh, probably because they don't have enough block yet, but they had the same, same number of successful blocks. So uh, looks like Chaos kind of took it on the chin a little bit. I know these guys are mostly AV8, and these guys are mostly AV9, but there is enough AV7 on Reptiles for that not to work out. And it looks like uh, the Lizard team kind of, my Reptiles, possessed the ball for the majority of the game. Uh, MVP, they have 15 for the Mighty Reptiles, and looks like 11 for Chaos Monks, so we'll check them out later. Uh, early developing Chaos, as, as you know, can be very difficult, and early Lizards are very strong, so it's not unsurprising that that is the result, but um, kind of surprised about those blocked numbers. Ragged Princess 1-1 one one versus Is This a Furry Team, <laughs> which is Necro. Oh, this guy is a badass, big boss. He's only one SPP away from his next level, which probably be Dodge, but hopefully for him it's a... Uh, Mighty blow. It looks like an MVP on Fox here, who took an injury also, maybe? Oh, no, and Fox got movement nine. Sorry, G-Man, Division 5. <laughs> you have an AG5 catcher to worry about. 1-1 one, one versus Necro and the, uh, and the what else? We got a death over here. That's not good. 12 armor breaks to one. That is not completely unusual, especially if he's getting kicked. It looks like he was getting kicked. Uh, the, the Necro team possessed the ball by a far margin there and, and threw away more blocks. That's not unusual. Six removal, so I mean, good on the Wood Elves for, uh, for for taking 56 blocks and, and six removals and still getting the tie out of that. That's probably an interesting score there. Only nine points for the for the Wood Elves, which is unusual. They like to score a lot of points, so uh, he's going to need a game or two, I think, to where he really explodes and gets a bunch of touchdowns to develop his squad. And then over here, it looks like 14 for the Necro squad. All right. Drop Dead Gore Juice versus Dead Game. Looks like uh, Dead Game is probably a... Well, maybe not. So this is Necro versus Undead. Uh, dead Game. Drop Dead Gore <laughs> Similar theme names. Two touchdowns for the Necro, too. Well, so uh, didn't get on the board for, for, the, uh, for the Undead squad. Mummy got the MVP, though. That's really, really nice. And he ends up with Guard. So that's good. And then over here, the were Blackie the Werewolf. He got the MVP. He ended up oh AG4 Werewolf. That sucks. I mean, it's awesome for it's awesome for this coach, <laughs> but it sucks for the rest of the division. Uh, two oh, that's that's kind of tough. Let's check out the stats real fast. Looks like again Necro. Necro has been very ball possessive in this squad in this uh, division here. Uh, five KOs. That's that's the difference right there. You only got KOs when you need removals. So if Undead aren't removing people, they they really struggle. Um, there you go. SPP, just the MVP on dead game. That's that sucks. That's kind of a dead game, but at least the MVP went to a, to a zombie or to a mummy, so that's helpful. Uh, and 15 for drop dead juice there. Choo -choo 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 -choo. Bane of the Living doing a zero zero versus Inn's Mouth Inchworms. 
<laughs> zero zero undead versus Nurgle. That actually doesn't surprise me very much. Oh oh, this Blodger got an MVP. Uh, oh he didn't. He got the he got the MVP, but he's getting pretty close. Uh, and then this Nurgle Warrior ends up with the MVP for him, so that's good. Eight armor breaks is sixteen armor breaks for the Nurgle. That's crazy. There's two mighty blow over here on the, at least two mighty blow on the undead squad. 51 blocks to 35. I mean, this it's not actually that unusual for undead to get to get out hit a little bit because they like to um, they like to just plant mob, plant zo uh, zombies on on the important pieces. So like, Nurgle warrior sits there, undead throws a mummy or a zombie at him. Nurgle warrior punches him down, zombie gets back up, goes back on the Nurgle warrior. So it's free blocks. So it's not unusual that uh, undead get out blocked. But it is unusual when they get out removed. So you can see they actually remove more people even though they threw less blocks. So this is not unusual because, again, they have more Mighty Blow. Uh, there you go. Undead ended up not getting uh, any, any fucking SCP there. That sucks for them. Uh, and then, is that right? There you go. Uh, we'll go on to the next squad there. To, to, to where we at? Uh, Bane of the Living Resentment Mouth Worms. That's a lot of SPP. Actually, I want to check that out. In the uh, Nurgle squad, got a ton of SPP for not winning, the, for not scoring a touchdown. Two, four, six. They got 12. That's crazy. Versus nine. All right. Slip and gets one one versus Dead Pirates uh, Robots four. <laughs> Dead, dead Pirate Roberts. Four. Man, there's a lot of undead and Nurgle squads here. This is uh, Lizard Squad. Uh, one to one versus... I'm assuming this is undead. Uh, and they got an MVP on us. I mean, that could be... Could be Camry. Um, I'm going to have to check. Dead Pirate Roberts. Where are you at? Dead Pirate Roberts. Yeah, you're undead. Alright. So, oops, that's not what I wanted. So one to one, uh, MVP on a source, that's awesome. MVP on a skeleton, that sucks. 14 armor breaks to 14 armor breaks. Looks like they just kind of got up and pushed each other, I imagine. Uh, no, the undead out punched, punched them this time, that's unusual. Uh, six removals for them, they doubled up removals against them, against the uh, lizards. Uh, looks like 10 versus 12, so. One one, got some development though, so that's an all right squad. Uh, and then the last game of week three was Super High Elves versus the Preston Penguins. And it looks like the Preston Penguins won. And they're a human team. I'm a human coach, so I love it. <laughs> all those undead and all those bash teams, those Nurgle and bash teams, and then the uh, the humans and the elves had to go at it. And Lyman got an MVP, though. I imagine he got he got block. I usually go uh, dodge first on almost all elves. But that actually that makes sense on a High Elf squad because they start with so few block, so little block them. Maybe looking for somebody else to hit with. Four armor breaks to six. Kind of a passive game. Two touchdowns for the humans, though. Uh, Lyman got the MVP. That's no good for him. Uh, Twelve blocks to 43 blocks. Oh, my God. The humans about to beat. About the beaten. With three re only three removals, though. That's uh, They're hitting with, uh, hitting with mittens, it looks like. There we go. Uh, 11, 12, 14 SPP for the humans. And then seven for the high elves. So now you're caught up to speed on the development. Check out the leaderboard real fast. Drop Dead Gorgeous, the Necro team is 4-0. They are running away with the division, so I'm going to not roll the run. They're, it's too early to run away with the division, but it's they're off to a hell of a lead. We'll check them out. And the fun, the, another Necro team, both Necro teams are leading the, leading the way, 2-1-1. One, one. But he's in a three-way tie with the Undead and the Lizards. So the Nick Dude, General Marauder, and Cretan are all uh, right behind. So they need they need Drop Dead Gorgeous to, to drop a game. Nurgle... Uh, one and two and oh, no losses for the Nurgle squad. That's a really impressive job by Tato Scone. Um, which is a weird name. <laughs> Tato Scone. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. But uh, 950 TV says way behind in development, probably because he's missing a player. But uh, no losses as Nurgle. That's amazing. Really good job. Mad Stompers, the Chaos Dwarfs, uh, one, one, and one. And then we got uh, Camry with a dead game, which is actually, these are impressive records for these guys, too, because they have such ball handling problems. Wood Elf King Can. I imagine this Wood Elf coach, if he can keep his pieces together, is going to have a good season. Ilgoth. Uh, Matt Ilgoth, I believe, is in my BC2 league. Uh, one of the admin administrators for BC2, Big Crunch 2, so. He's rocking up uh, 103 as Lizards. Uh, Preston Penguins, the Humans, Chaos Monks, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Slippery Gets and Dead Pirate Roberts. And then Super High Elves. Oh, Robot Co. Robot Co. like rocked the uh, 
<laughs> rocked the 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 playoff pool last season. So we do the the round of playoffs, around round of 32. He predicted that I, I want to say second most matches or third most matches. Like he picked a bunch of elf upsets. Uh, he just basically if it was an elf, he picked them. <laughs> and he was, and he was right. There was a lot of REL elf teams that went out there and just fucking rocked it. Uh, so that is where the current leaderboard stands. I'm gonna check out a couple teams here. Let's start out with uh, Drop Dead Gorgeous. You guys need to know what kind of development the leader is at. Uh, where are you at, Drop Dead Gorgeous? He's at 1340 Necro Squad. So let's check out how Crow Dog 09 is building his squad here. You guys need to know this. Need to know. He's got all his rerolls, so he's all set there. He's got 5,000 in the bank. He does probably not going to spend that. I would save that until you get a positional that loses it. Um, and the most important part, so start with Blackie Mole, AG4 Wolf. This is disgusting because he is an AG access, agility access piece. So once they get AG4, man, he's going to get dodge, and he can score touchdowns with this guy at will. Uh, you usually want to hit with your werewolves, but you need them kind of get the mighty blow to do that. I love having the having the one agility wolf and then the one hitter. It's like one ball carrier or, or marker slash both, uh, and then or surfer even, and then one hitter. So if he can make Maul into a hitter and Blackie into a, a ball carrier, this is going to be a move eight agility four you know blodge piece. This is going to be difficult to deal with. Uh, you got mighty blow on the white. There's a lot of uh, debate. Well, I don't say a lot of it. Most coaches, most necro coaches, put guard first on their whites, uh, but I think it's really smart to put mighty blow on one of them because you can't always attack with your wolves. You can't always blitz with your wolves because they get frenzy traps. So I like to have one of these guys built as a hitter and then the other guy go guard. These guys block and guard. Well, he's one one injury away from uh, this flesh golem getting blocked. You guys need to watch out for this. You guys need to prevent this because once he starts getting these guys moving, once they get blocked, guard, stand firm, they're they're set. They level really slowly. He's already got a, a level on Peter Agony. So. Uh, Blodge Ghoul for, for ball carrying, which I'm, I imagine is going to do most of his ball carrying on Blackie, but if he really needs it, he'll put it on Ugly Betty for a while. And that's a fresh ghoul. He's probably not getting much play time. And the Dirty Player, two MVPs on Blushing Bill. Two MVPs in five games. Does have nine successful blocks, so good for him. Uh, this guy got his, his AG4 in his first level. I imagine he's got a couple touchdowns. Uh, he's got a pass and a catch. And three touchdowns. Yeah, he's going to be nasty. You guys need to stomp that menace out <laughs> as quickly as possible. Uh, I don't think any of this matters. That's easy. You can see his team has not lost uh, it's not lost yet. Did one spin match. Uh, and one spin match, man. He started out not doing very much. So you, <laughs> you guys need to watch out for that squad. Uh, you check out two teams in each division. So I'm going to check out... I did Necro. I kind of want to check out one of the undead teams. Where is that? Bane of the Living in... Let's see. Uh, I mean, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick a random number between 1 and 14. Random number generator. And we'll pick a squad for a second squad. Since, oh, 10. I got 10. So, human penguins. The Preston penguins. Let's do that there. Which is cool because I love, I love human teams. I'm a human coach. So, let me check out the Preston penguins there. I'll probably have a lot to say about the Preston penguins. Because, like I said, I am a human coach. Lava Jackal. Lava Jackal. You get to hear my wisdom, <laughs> or lack thereof, as the case may be. Started out with one thrower and one catcher. That is not unusual. You have to be QC. He's already got two touchdowns on his catcher. Or three touch, two touchdowns on his catcher. So you need to be a little bit careful about giving too many touchdowns um, to your catchers. Because you really need to develop your blitzers. Like These guys have no touchdowns. And this guy already needs to be replaced. I suppose you can keep this guy. Do a guard stand firm and just make him immobile. Uh, it depends on where you are in development. He's got no money to back him up, so I would probably would keep him for a little while at least. Uh, you have to, like I said, you have to be careful about these. You see, he threw through his thrower and threw it to the catcher, and he's been scoring touchdowns. You need to be careful about scoring too many touchdowns. Like right now, he's got Blodge. He's cool. Let him let him marinate for a while. Go ahead and get touchdowns on these blitzers. This is absolutely crucial that you develop these guys. The first one that gets the level, ideally he gets mighty blow, and the next three all get guard, and then you need to try and tackle. Um, so the lineup's not bad. You got an extra lineman. Um, so when you have an extra lineman as human, especially early on, when you get this guy back, if you have a bench spot, you need to uh, be aggressive with fouls. Even though you don't have a dirty player, you have the bench. So you need to get some removals. Be aggressive with the fouls, man. But be careful about scoring too many touchdowns on uh, on Roy Barclo. Because if he, if he monopolizes our touchdowns, you'll be way behind a blitzer development. And you have a lot of bash in this division, so you need to start building guard. In fact, you have so much bash in this division, I might go guard. I might be able to my first three guys get guard instead of opposed to... I might go guard, 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 and then Mighty Blow. I wouldn't put Mighty Blow on this guy because you're going to replace him eventually. But 
I'm going to go guard, guard, mighty blow, guard. Because uh, the counter to bash teams for a non-bashing, like humans are, they have these guys that can hit, they got strength access, but the counter isn't more, isn't, you don't fight mighty blow with mighty blow, you fight mighty blow with guard. And try and limit those uh, two dice. That's how I build this squad. Uh, throwers, I generally with throwers, I like to build dump off throwers. Um, and the way I build them is, um, this, and this is me personally, it's very unusual. He's likely to go block here and make him an extra hitter because he's got the same stats line as a, as a lineman. So it's not bad to go block with a guy who can throw and pass when you need to. Uh, block, kickoff, return, accurate in that form, in that order. Um, something like that because you're going to score touchdowns with them. Uh, but I like to go because you need touchdowns on your other guys. I like to get, go accurate first. And then hope I get, uh, or unless I get doubles, I go strong arm, and then accurate. If I can get, so if I don't get, if I get a double my first two, that's strong arm. Otherwise, if it's accurate and strong arm, otherwise I get uh, accurate, so I can throw the ball, and I throw the ball a lot. Uh, when it's safe behind the line, get that SVP. Try to do it every single offensive drive. Try to get at least one SVP in my thrower. Uh, and then my next play is dump off, and then like nerves of steel. And I think dump off as a human is really good. But I also run heavier catchers, so I have somebody to dump off to. Uh, I would not run a dump off catch, dump, dump, dump off thrower on a team like this where you only have one guy to catch it. So this guy likely to get block, block, and then kick off return. Uh, let's start developing that guy a little bit. I like to run more catchers. Uh, you had a bank, so can't afford to replace this guy anyway. That's a squad. That's what I would do. I would go guard, guard, mighty blow. In this particular division, because you're, you're, it's so so bashy. But uh, if you went mighty blow guard guard, I wouldn't argue with you, man. Wouldn't argue with you. Uh, and the ogre, ogre needs to start getting some touchdown or getting some uh, <laughs> some some SPP there. Uh, what do we got going on here? The Mad Stompers versus Super High Elves. Let's check out that game. We're gonna check out a couple of these games here. Mad Stompers versus Super High Elves. Where are they at in the leaderboard? Uh, Mad Stompers right in the middle. It's gonna be Chaos Dwarf versus the High Elves. So we're down at the back there. But I kind of want to check this team out real fast. Oh, man. Let's see how this matchup's going to go. Uh, da, 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 da. Mad Stompers, Chaos Dwarfs, 1140. Homer Kongen. Homer Kongen. Uh, looks like so far he's only got block on his Bull Centaur, but he does have his third reroll and his Apothecary. Uh, and he's got uh, one, two, he's got five blockers. So he's still count. He's still saving up for a blocker. Nope, he's down here. He hit him down here out of the way. So he's, now he's got his full roster. He's got exactly what he needs. He's got a... One bench spot so we can kick people. Um, this is a, a developing chaos team, but it's chaos dwarf team, but it's developing the right way, man. You already got block on your bull centaur. He's only an SPP away or one injury away from right wolf half bull getting there. Um, man, good. And then uh, two touchdowns in the hobgoblin. We gotta be careful about putting touchdowns in hobgoblin or not touchdowns. These are injuries. These are it's a hard hitting goblin, man. Look at this guy. Two Kazas. Good job for him. Uh, yeah, this is a good-looking team. This is going to be with all that tackle. Let's see if the High Elves have anything to counter it. What are they called? They're called the High... Uh, what did I say? Schedule. Super High Elves. Super High Elves. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny, dude. Uh, super High Elves. I feel like every every High Elf coach makes a play on the on the Elves being being high. <laughs> on, the, on the name. Robot Go. Uh, block on linemen. Block on linemen. So he's got four hitters now. So you need to start You need to start putting guard on these linemen that level, brother. Not guard, excuse me. Uh, dodge. But the, the strength of of high elves, is, or any elf really, is being able to reposition their players. Um, so if, if you it's harder to do that when you don't have dodge so if you re, you want put dodge on your guys i almost put dodge on almost every line out i can see uh, for high elves because you only start with two blockers i can see maybe them having one or two block guys first but the rest of these guys need to go dodge first so they can reposition and get off the ball and make and make successful uh, reliable dodges away from away from pressure because you don't want to hit a bunch as high elves um, so, but in this particular instance, you're doing okay picking up these block because you're placing chaos doors where the attack on the gates are dodge anyway. So having the extra block in this particular instance, this one rare instance, is actually doing you a favor. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. You got three rerolls. You got the apothecary, so that's good. You need the rerolls with high elves. That's that's crucial. It's crucial. High elves start really slow, but in the long run, are really really strong, man. Really really strong. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, throwers developing. There's not a lot of development here. Fort Collins, he just needs to do one vanity pass, and he's gonna get a level. And that's kind of when I play when I play elves, I kind of do that. I kind of get an MVP, and then I uh, on whoever, and just throw that guy a pass because it's really easy. This guy can get that level super fast. You need to start developing these blitzers. You need to focus on develop getting touchdowns on these blitzers, which you should be able to do. 
And I would throw with ca Champagne Kush. Champagne Kush. Every single time. Every single time. Um, let's check out one other game. Oh, so that particular game, I'm going to go with the uh, I'm gonna go with the Chaos Wars in that game. I don't think there's enough weapons on the on the High Elves just yet to, to really compete with that game. I think I'm going to get out bash pretty hard. Uh, I want to check out uh, Dead Game versus Innsmouth Inchworms. So, Dead Game versus Innsmouth. What do we got here? Dead Game is Kemri. Kemri. Uh, they got <laughs> with Hail Mary. Hail Mary pass on their uh, takedown red saber. <laughs> Dead game. These are what well, these are all video games, right? League of Legends, World of Warcraft, Dota, Half Life. All right. I wonder if these are games he thinks aren't popular anymore. I wonder how this works. Every anime fighter ever. Uh, he's got a mighty blow on his Brits Ross, so he can hit pretty hard. And he's got guard on one of his tomb guardians. And this guy's only a Half Life Three is only a injury away. Is Half Life Three out? Is that an old game now? Like last one I played was Half Life Two. I didn't know they released another one. Valve is from my hometown, so Steam and uh, Half-Life, that's uh, hometown of Seattle, Washington, man. Uh, do, 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 fumble, that's funny. <laughs> Chaos Edition. So he's going to hit hard, I mean, that's what he does, he hits hard. He's got two uh, two throw rods, two blitz rods, only got two re-rolls, though. He needs to save up for that third re-roll, so we'll see if that uh, lack of re-roll actually comes up biting him. Uh, and who was he playing? He was playing uh, Insomouth, Innsmouth Inchworms, which I... Apparently cannot say. It's mouth inchworms. Where you at, bro? The Nurgle squad. Nurgle versus Camry. Oh, this is gonna be a fun game. Oh man. And he's out of he's out of Nurgle Warrior. He's only got two rerolls. Oh brother. Tato Scone. Tato Scone, keep your squad together. You need a touchdown on Haster. Oh man, your your Nurgle, your beast. Is he just getting MVPs? Is he just fucking eating MVPs? That's great. He's got two MVPs. Alright. One more injury, he gets another level. That's fucking great. Stand firm. Boom. Sold. <laughs> Unless it's doubles and you get blocked. Sold. Sold. Um, yeah, man. You want stand firm on these breeze pretty bad. Pretty bad. Uh, just a vanity pass here. Rotter got an MVP. He got kick uh, with kick on a bash team. Uh, it's not actually that usual. Uh, and this guy may not live that long. <laughs> he got, with kick on a bash team, you kind of want to throw deep. I mean, it depends. In general, when you're use kick, you want to kick deep against bash teams and kick short against agility teams, because that way you can get uh, you can get your guys in contact with the agility teams and bash teams. You can make them slow down. Well, I don't usually see kick on bash teams. Usually, kick is something you see on agility teams. So I'm interested to see how he uses that. Uh, hopefully, his Pestigore doesn't have anything super injury. Just an MNG, so he'll be back. He'll be back, but it looks like he's gonna rock uh, nine player or ten players. So he's gonna have one loner, one loner rotter. Oh, this guy took an AG bus. But really, he's AG two, so that OG bus doesn't really mean a lot. I mean, you could replace him, but you really need that third reroll. So I would just hang on to him. And, um, block, stand firm. Block, guard, stand firm. He don't need to go anywhere anyway. He's only AG AG two. Uh, so Camry versus Nurgle, man. Uh, Nurgle's big. Big advantage early is that you can't really ball handle it around them. However, Camry doesn't really, they're not going to do any handoffs or any throws or anything. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to take Camry in this one. I'm going to take Camry in that squad. So, dead game, uh, I'm counting on you to to make me look good there. Make me look good. All right, man, that's Division 5. G-Man Division 5. We're going to go on to G-Man Division 4. G-Man Division 4, see how the schedule's looking for this week. Uh, only one game played, so we can go on and check out week 3. Uh, this looks like it was an admin. Actually, maybe not. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, this was an admin uh, concede there. So, lucky on Society of Dead Poets. This is an undead squad. Uh, Camry squad, actually. Tomb Guardian got an MVP. And Skeleton got an MVP. So, I guess we should go. We should probably check out the touchdowns on that. Uh, those two guys. So, Society of Dead Poets. Those are the two touchdowns, in case you didn't know already. Uh, are these all admin? I remember those one division that had a bunch of admin. This is a 2-0. All right, 2-0 versus... This is Nurgle versus Necro. This is not surprising. Nurgle really struggles early. Uh, look at this wolf, dude. Man, this guy... How much... Well, we might check these guys out, too. And he's AG4. Oh, no! Oh, no! He got AG4. Uh, Kihuru. Kiharu. Man. Chiharu? Chiharu. I don't know how he says it. Damn. He's got two, MV, two MVPs. Uh, and three touchdowns, and he is going to score a grip more. I would get that guy Blodge immediately. <laughs> I would just keep scoring touchdowns on him until he got Blodge. You want to protect that AG4. Um, two touchdowns, 11 armor breaks. Oh, you got Claw. You got Claw. 
Uh, he possessed the ball more. Necro, man, they're a ball possessing team. I, I guess I didn't realize that how they're, every Necro squad we've seen has won the ball possession game. 45 blocks of 42, pretty even. But look at all, look at these removal dice. That's the difference in the game right there. Necro couldn't, couldn't compete with that. That's that's brutal. I don't know. I wonder if there's any money blow on his team. Uh, 10 points on that stud wolf will end up getting the AG. He's just going to get nastier. You guys need to stomp him out before he gets really bad. 19 SPP altogether and only 7 for the Nurgle squad. So that's a rough game. Nurgle expects to lose, but they need to get some SPP for the development. Uh, da -da -da. Blue in the face. Blue in the face is a Wood Elf team who lost 0-2 to a Dark Elf team. Dark Elves are actually a tough matchup for early Wood Elf, so that's not super surprising. This... Lineman, oh my god, how many games, how many games has this guy played? He has five fucking MVPs. What? He's got five MVPs in six matches. This guy is a fucking MVP magnet. What is going on with Sirlor? Oh my goodness. All right. So Sirlor gets uh, his fifth MVP. I'm sure, I'm sure that coach is getting tired. Dark Star second liner has got to be tired of this. But he picked up. He's got leap. He's got this guy is a sacker already. He's got wrestle leap. Uh, he's just going to jump in and he's going to ruin your cage, man. 13 armor breaks to 5. Uh, Dark Elf possessed the ball. That's not unusual for this matchup. 27 blocks to 24. So not a lot of hitting going on this one. Uh, man, there was a game, uh, Herring Zord, who uh, you guys know was Rotter. Herring Zord? No, it wasn't Herring Zord. It was, um, it was Nose Dice versus Sand Dune in the Clan, Clan League matchup. There was 100 and I want to say 137 blocks thrown in that game. Uh, and by comparison, this one had, had 51. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was chaos versus dwarfs. This is elves versus elves. Six removals. I mean, he tripled up the removals. That's tough to beat. Like I said, the dark elf versus versus wood elf early on really favors the dark elves. 17 SPP for the dark line second liners and seven for blue in the face. Blue in the face. Um, seven circles versus. Rockamotive Git Stompers, which is Norris. Oh, man, we don't see enough Norris squads in them. I love it. Uh, but they, they took it on the chin a little bit against Chaos, which is a tough matchup for them. One of their worst matchups, actually. Air. Air ends up getting the MVP, and he got Mighty Blow before block. He is going to be the guy on the line that hits. This is looking like he's going to be a Murder Chaos uh, Chaos Warrior. Interesting to see if he's going down the Murder Chaos route uh, for the whole squad. This runner, uh, he's got Blodge. He's got Blodge. He's not looking bad. Blodge runner is really good, actually. Uh, Chaos possessed the ball. The ball wasn't a lot of ball possession. It was a lot more hated than ball possessing in this game. <laughs> 25%. I mean, less than only just a little bit over half the game when somebody possessed the ball. <laughs> Otherwise, they were in. And uh, 55 blocks to 34. This isn't unusual. Usually, you see them see them with lots of blocks because of all their frenzy. Uh, but the no removals that really got them. These only one KO or one injury. That that's brutal. This isn't unusual against a Norris team getting these these kind of removals, but them. Norris not getting removals back. Uh, that, that's the story of the game right there. So seven circles got removals, and the get stoppers couldn't do anything back. They needed to hit um, hit the beast, and it didn't work. Didn't work for him. Stars, st Starats, Starats five versus uh, this is Skaven. Oh, loner MVP. That's brutal. Uh, versus Necro or versus Nurgle. Excuse me, and it looks like this guy, he got the level, so he went block mighty blow. This guy is going to be a thug, and he is going to hurt you unless you guys stomp him out. Two touchdowns on a Nurgle squad versus Rats. That's, I mean, I guess the, if the Rats, could, if their defense isn't up to speed, this is going to happen. Um, so good on good on both these squads for keeping it close. 18 armor breaks to one. Oh, man. Uh, six injuries inflicted. Jesus. Irwinder's chance. That is brutal. And one kill. So they <laughs> nine removals. Six Kazes, one kill. So good on the rats for keeping in. Only 12 successful blocks and one KO. Oh, man. Good job. Keeping, uh, keeping. I'm going to check out that rat squad. What is, what, I have to check out that rat squad. How do they keep up that? Star rats. Uh, Pemble Fort the Drinker versus... I mean, this might be... No. Pem, Pemble Fort Drinker. Drink, yeah. Versus No Doubt and Failure. This is another uh, another Norris squad. I love it, man. Another squad versus Chorfs. Seven armor breaks to 14. Like I said, that's not unusual. Uh, there's more armor breaks against. Uh, it is unusual to get out blocked. Although Dwarfs block a lot, too. So this is probably a bit of a slugfest. One injury and one KO inflicted. So only two KOs. That's not that's not a very hard-hitting Chorf squad. So. Not a lot of... <laughs> 
lot of of uh, SVP in this one. This was a zero zero tie, seven to five. So that, that was probably a slugfest. Forty uh, ninety seven blocks in that game. So <laughs> there you go. It'll be interesting to watch that game. And we'll wrap it up with Dangerous Lizards versus the Surrender Squad. Surrender Squad clearly is a uh, is a uh, admin squad. So this kink got MVP. He got level. Dive and tackle. There you go. Sidestep tackle. That's no good. And this kink, he ain't got nothing. He ain't got nothing. Here's your touchdowns, brother. Looks like a couple uh, Saurus. A couple Saurus. Uh, those are cool names, though. <laughs> All right. Let's check out the leaderboard. 4-0, Dangerous Lizards, uh, they play, they're the only one to play their game so far this week. I mean, you guys, it's Saturday. You guys need to, need to fucking get on it. Bobby Bintang, Bobby Bintang, no wonder this guy. This coach, Bobby Bintang, is uh, awesome. <laughs> he's he's a really cool dude. Played him uh, in the playoffs two, two seasons ago where he stomped me with his humans. Rerolled in the Dark Elves. I love this squad. I'm going to check out Bobby Bintang's squad because uh, no. Uh, and here's Anderson. Anderson, Pebble Fort Drinking Air. He is of the Pebble Fort Chargers fame. Now, there's a lot of recognizable names in Division 4. This is a fucking tough division. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Uh, he's running up. He's in, these two guys are undefeated. These are, they're going to go at it. Anderson running his Norris. They're undefeated also. Uh, Chaos Seven Circles with Z Zinges. 2-1-0. Uh, Necro following up. So starting to get into the teams with the loss, but only one loss. So you're not far out of it at all. So, Anacast Karios. Palmu, uh, which is surprising. That's all he plays is... Um, all he plays is Cameron, we know that, because that's all he talks about on Discord. Norris, Rockamotive Get Stomers from Hammersep, who's usually a human coach. So, uh, he, Norris is in a huge stretch form. I imagine he's going to do really well. Uh, that Rat Squad, Morbus, Morbus versus, versus Chaos Dwarfs. Killer Rich, like, I, I recognize a ton of these names. Erwinder, Erwinder's Chance, of course. Uh, look, Luclazzi, Luclazzi. With Norris falling up, they're on 0-3. Uh, this is this Norris seems struggling. That can happen to Norris sometimes. They're pretty strong out of the box, but if they take armor breaks, then they get to be in a bit of a trouble. Uh, team group hug <laughs> from the Nurgle squad. So that is your standings. We are going to check out, uh, for sure, we're going to check out Dark Star second liners. Because um, I know Bobby and I want to check out his team. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where are you at, Bobby Bintang? Um... Uh, is it right in front of me and I can't see it? Did I pass it? I passed it. Did I pass it? No, that's that rat squad I want to check too, though. Uh, do, 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 do. Dark Star Second Liner. Of course, I walked right by it. It was the number third one. 1480 Dark Elves. Holy cow, brother. How many games did you play? You played seven games. You're 1480 already. This is... You guys need to start stomping him out. He only lost one spin. Probably one of his early spins. Um... Yep, Skinky Island Boys, which is a it's an REL squad. Oh, he beat them. Uh, here we go. He lost to KNG, which is a Chorf squad in uh, R G or excuse me REL four. Uh, that's a tough matchup. Tough matchup. So other than other than that, he is just cruising right along. Two goals a game. Other than this one, let's check out the team roster here. Uh, three wrestle guys, three wrestle guys, which is, you know, you need sackers. And this guy who's, he's, he's probably been his, uh, his MVP eating lineman. <laughs> you got leap. You got leap. I would actually, he's so close. He only needs two more touchdowns. I might feed this guy two more touchdowns, uh, and get tackle, get leap tackle. So you can really, really just get jump. Just, just dive that cage, um, and get that ball down. If you got leap tackle, then you're guaranteed 50% chance to uh, to get the ball free. Um, I go leap tackle pro. <laughs> that's what I would do if you got that far. But that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. And these two guys, so these guys are the these guys are originally are the line fodder, and Indies and Erlen, they're both going to stay line fodder. But I would keep this guy off the line of scrimmage because you want him to. This is a valuable piece now, so you don't want to be on there. He's got Blodge, Mighty Blow. That's a blitzer you guys need to watch out for. And then these guys are both touchdowns away, so this squad's going to get out of control super fast. Uh, he also needs to get touchdowns on Glor Gloralana right away. And this is a – I have this problem with my Dark Elf squads too. I do play Dark Elves. I'm actually playing them in CCL right now is you have so many priorities. Uh, what, what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? Uh, this guy's pretty – I would get him ta tackle, but it wouldn't be a priority. My first priority would be get this Witch Elf block or um, – Wrestle, but since you have three wrestle pieces, it probably block. Uh, get him her block right away, uh, and then I'd get these two blitzers their their dodge or their blodge first. Next, uh, this piece though, this piece though is going to be the game changer. You guys need to watch out for him. He is going to hurt your feelings. Um, man, 
Looking good, Bobby Bintang. I don't really have a lot of advice for you. This guy will probably get tackle next. You get tackle here and tackle here, and you're set on tackle for a hot minute. Um, and you can do... Uh, there's a bunch of ways to do blitzers. I, I would normally build one blitzer to, to leave the cage, but you already have a lineman doing it. So uh, I like diving tackle tackle. Diving tackle, sidestep tackle, some combination there. I think that's an awesome blitzer. Um, you know, ball carrier course, you can get blood, sure hands. Since you're not running, there's no runner over here, which I totally agree with. I don't like the, the dark elf runner. I don't hate it, but it's not. It's more AV7 than you really need. Um, it's an all right piece, but I would go like blood, sure hands, blood, sure hands, sidestep, something along there. So you have a ball carrier, you have a hitter, um, you have a marking piece, and then you can do all kinds of. Stuff. You can make this guy a frenzy piece. You already have two frenzy pieces. I don't. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff with this. Um, so a, a hitter, a marker, a ball carrier, and then if you feel like you need another one of those, you double it up with a blitzer. I usually, if I get Mighty Blow, of course, you make that guy a hitter also. So tons of options. I mean, Dark Elves are very flexible, very versatile. This guy here, though, Sir Lore, <laughs> he's your MVP, and I know that because he's got five of them. He's got five of them. All right, let's check out, uh, let's check out the leaderboard, and we're going to do a... Do a random number generator here and see what we got. We got 14 teams, so let's generate a number here. Three, number three, Pemble Fort Drinker Anderson, who does our hype videos. Let's check out uh, the Pemble Fort, Pemble Fort Drinkers. Uh, da, 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 da. Pemble Fort Drinkers, 1170, 1170 squad here. Looks like they got uh, Mighty Blow Yeti. Let's claw Mighty Blow. This guy is gross. He's going to keep him in the games. And that's about all he's got. He's got Blood Shear for, for Toloff. Uh, but he's got a bunch of guys who are close. Look at this guy's a touchdown away. This guy's a touchdown away. This guy's a touchdown away. Um, this guy is probably an injury away. This guy's an injury away. So this squad, this is one of those squads where as a as a Norris coach or any coach, when you have this many guys close, he's going to have one game or two games where he's going to get two to two to four levels. And it seems just going to explode in value. There's not a lot to talk about right now. Um... One, one thing I like to talk about with Norris is how do they use their ulfs. Uh, I am a favor. Actually, I like to build my, ulf, my ulfs as hitter. I like to get them block Mighty Blow, uh, my, block Mighty Blow tackle. A lot of people go guard. They like to go guard. I think that's a mistake. Uh, but the reason they go guard is because you you do the majority of your hitting with your with these guys, right? You go you go block Mighty Blow pile on. I mean, these guys are your their strength four and their and their. Uh, and they're age AV9, so I like these guys to be my hitters. I'm not a fan, I'm not a huge fan. I don't play in a lot of Norse, so I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm not a huge fan of the two Berserker build. I like the one Berserker build because I want to hit with my Ulfs uh, and get one Berserker. Because right now he's got four guys that fucking essentially hit. So that's why a lot of these guys turn these into block guard, block guard stand firms, because they need the guard. Uh, and then they use the Berserkers to hit. I like to use these guys to hit because they're strength four. Uh, and I dump one of these guys, and then I have two runners because runners, <laughs> runners have Dauntless, and so they can hit in a pinch, man. Especially if they get a, they get a double, and they can get Mighty Blow also, and then they become hitters. So I like the agility team. The agility, I like to carry two runners, one berserker, uh, two wolves. But that's not the way he went. So it's gonna be interesting to see what he ends up doing with these. But not a lot of development on this squad, so we are going to do uh, we're gonna do another team. Since we uh, have some time. Seven. No, I'm not gonna do seven because that's Norris also. Eight. Aha! Star Rats, which is exactly what I wanted. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted to see. <clears throat> 880 Skaven. <laughs> 880 is not very much. Not very much. Cortas. Court Cortas. Uh, need, you, need, you need lots. You need lots. This team's been beat up a little bit. But <laughs> oh my god. But he's going to win games because he has a one-turner. Uh, I mean, this guy's got a lot of things he needs. I would probably go block first because you only need one push to score. Though I go block and then sprint and sure feet. Uh, but you need to start building up your rats, man. Start building up your rats. Not a lot here. This guy's already injured. Looks like, I mean, he had six Kazes in his last game and a death. Um, Lyman taking horns. That's interesting. This is an interesting choice, man. What did you get here? He's just MNG. That's a line rat with horns. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before. Line rat with horns. But I guess he can hit. Get him block. He can be an extra hitter. Turn him into Storm Vermin. Um, what are you going to do with doubles on Line Rat? Usually, for me, guard. I would have got guard. I would have got guard and then got him blocking immediately. As fast as I could anyway. Um, but he's an extra hitter. He's an extra hitter. So, uh, this team this team needs to develop. You need to get your two gutters. Get those guys up to the speed. And then you can, you're going to stay in some games with this. You're going to stay in some games for sure. It's not a lot here to look at, so I'm going to look at one more team. 
Uh, looks like we're going to look at number nine. I'm using a random number generator, so 789 just came in. That's what it is. Morbus. Morbus. Uh, this is the name I've heard of. Morbus is no doubt in failure. No doubt in failure. I don't know what that means. Okay. Morbus, check out your squad real fast. This will be the last one we check out. Uh, wow. That's <laughs> a good looking short team already. So he's got, let's start with the blockers. We'll get to these guys next. These blockers went guard, guard, block. I don't know what rate these went into, but I like this. Um, people like to mix their mighty blow and their guard. I think you should go all heavy guard. Heavy guard. He's only got two rerolls, so I imagine he, he takes his winnings for his next game and get, a next, get his third reroll. But anyway, back to blockers. I like to go uh, guard. <laughs> Just like regular dwarfs, go all the way guard. Uh, and then one or two mighty blows. This guy only follows orders. He went mighty blow, so... Uh, yeah, that's the way I do it. I mean, of course, if you get doubles, you go Claw because you can't really turn down Claw. The problem with Claw early before you get Mighty Blow is that it, uh, you level a lot slower. So you don't get those hits in. Uh, so but this is a good-looking team, man. I like, I like the double guard first. I think guard is the way to go with blockers for sure. Uh, and then uh, block on both these guys. They're all humming right along. This guy, he's only one SPP away from his break tackle. Uh, I like break tackle first, and then you can build one with sure hands. You make one mighty blow. You can make them hitters. You can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, most people, there's a, of course, there's the uh, the old debate whether you make them hitters or, or ball carriers. Uh, both are good. You could do one of each, uh, but mostly block break tackle is the standard, or break tackle block some form of those two is the standard for how you start with your bull senators, senators I should say. So he's already, he's already on track, and this guy's only one touchdown away from getting his next one. Uh, these guys, he's an MVP. He's a, a Kaz away. So this squad's looking pretty good, man. Looks like he's only got one MVP on a hobo, which is awesome. Which is pretty lucky, actually. You don't want your hobo stealing your MVPs. And he got dirty player. Uh, he needs to get a bit of a bench. So he needs a reroll, but he needs a bench too if he wants to use this dirty player. He needs he needs to bench it up. Because match teams don't want to be down players. Um, so if you get caught, you need to be, have somebody to take a spot. So uh, there's a couple things. He needs to get a reroll. He needs to get that. And then otherwise, the team is looking really, really, really strong, Morbus. So we checked out the leaderboard already, so let's check out the schedule for next week. Or this week, what's going on? Dangerous Losers already played Erwander's Chance, so um, that game's done. We won't check that out. Ankwash, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six uh, six games to check out. Let's check. Let's change our number generator here to six and run it. And we got six. So Northtown Fish Boys versus No Doubt and Failure. <laughs> Northtown Fish Boys. No doubt and failure. We just checked out. That's a really good-looking dark Elf, or uh, chaos warp team. Um, where are the North Town Fish Boys? Where are you at? You think that would be them? Because the fish right there. <laughs> you would think. You would think. North Town Fish Boys. Oh, they're humans. All right. All right. Ketzer himself. Could be worse. I love human teams. Eh? Let's see how you're gonna do. Um, you are a completely fresh team, so you're just joined. Uh, that's a tough draw for your first game, brother. That's a tough draw. No catchers on this squad, so you're not going to run around them. Um, you got your three rerolls. Yeah. I like to have one catcher. Actually, I actually like to have two catchers, but... Yeah. yeah make sure you get, try and get touchdown. Try to get at least one or two touchdowns on one of these guys. Uh, I think it's a tough game, considering you're going up against Chaos Dwarfs to start a, a fairly well-developed Chaos Dwarf team. Uh, so it's kind of a tough draw for you, uh, Northtown Fish Boys, Ketzer himself. But thanks for joining the squad and filling in the spot. Um... I would just try to throw a little bit. Make sure you try and get at least one touchdown on these guys. Try to get your blitzer some levels. If you can get around him, you got a chance because you're way faster than he is. Uh, but those those bull centaurs, they'll catch up to you. And they got break tackle, so at least one of them does. The other guy you can mark with alignment if you can get around the chaos, chaos dwarfs. Uh, clearly, I'm going to go with the chaos dwarfs on this one because dwarfs in general are, are kind of a tough matchup for humans. But it comes down to removals. Uh, this is a fresh human team, so uh, he's going to get some he's going to get some uh, inducements in this game, right? So he's nine eight nine seventy. Uh, versus 1180. So that is what? 2000? 2000? So I mean, get the wizard? You can get the wizard? Boom. Get the wizard, and that should get you a touchdown. Um, and then if you get one on your own, you're, you're fucking in it to win it, man. So it's a tough matchup for sure, but you are fast, and you got the wizard, which you can take advantage of. So, and then, and then a babe. A babe will also be good. Two babes and a bribe wouldn't be bad either. I would go wizard, though. And, uh,. That game could be close. That could be an upset in waiting, man. That could be an upset in waiting. For sure. But I'm going to take the chores because they are just super developed. Uh, whoops. We got one more game we're going to check out. And we can actually change our generator to five since we you did game six. Check this out. Three. 
Rakamoto Get Stompers versus Kuroto. Ku Kurotara. Kurotara. The Necro Team. The Necro Team that is fucking wrecking shit. Uh, we checked these guys out. Oh, we didn't check these guys out. Uh, AG4. And this guy's already got dodge. <laughs> this team is gross. And he's got tack He's got mighty blow tackle already. This is a well-developed team. Holy cow! How many games have you played, man? You've only played seven games. You played. You got beat by Static. It's bad. Damn. Um, but that's like what you're probably your only loss, right? You got two losses. This is a good-looking squad. This is a real good-looking squad. Uh, this guy's already got his level. The flesh golems are the, always the pain in the ass. And this guy's got guard. He's got guard. He's got mighty blow tackle. He's got an AG4 wolf. This is, this is sick. This is sick. And what was the team he's playing? The Rockamotive Git Stompers. Rockamotive Git Stompers. Are you a new team also, man? Uh, another oh, Hummer Steps Norris. Hummer Steps Norris. Uh, see, he went two runners, two berserkers, two ulfs, no yeti. He fucking left the yeti out. Uh, but only one, only one blodge piece for that tackle, that tackle wolf. But he's got, and only one mighty blow to hit him. Um, I think this match might be a little bit closer than we expect because of all the block. Necro don't start with a lot of block. Uh, he doesn't actually have that much, right? He's just got the two. Where you at, Kurodo? He's got three blocks. Well, he's got five. He's got, he does have five. So, because this guy got his block and these two start with him, and these guys already got theirs. So that's the old advantage. Uh, but there is a, a big SPP dis uh, disparity here 1310 versus 1140, which is what? Uh, 140, 150. 1310. Yeah, 150. So he can get a wizard. He can get a wizard. And he's got the teams. He's got the pieces to take advantage of the wizard. Uh, and all that block keeps him in it. I, I don't know. I don't know about this matchup, man. If he gets, if Hummerstep gets some uh, removals early, there's, there's a good possibility that, that wizard makes a difference. Good possibility that, that wizard makes a difference, and he's gonna stomp on you. Two, five, seven, nine, eleven. He's got exactly eleven. Um, he can go bribe. He can go bribe and get a, an extra lineman. He can go bribe and lineman instead of wizard, and then anytime you hit the ground, stomps on you. Especially one of those fucking wolves. Uh, no tackle over here. Which is gonna, that one wolf's gonna be an issue. But other than that, that one, I mean, this is going to be a close match, man. I, this is a, this is a toss-up. Uh, I like that AG4 Necro, AG4 Necro, though. So that's the way I'm going to go. That is your G-Man 4-5 division week, uh, what was it, three and a half? We'll call it week three and a half recap. Uh, I imagine that Motley will be back soon. Like I said, uh, he's kind of kind of got a busy real life. He's also busy just stomping the shit, <laughs> stomping the absolute shit of REL Division 1. He is killing it over there. So uh, maybe he's just focused on that. Um but he'll be back. He'll be back, and he'll be picking these back up. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to subscribe to my channel, Trunkhead Gaming, on YouTube, uh, I will not be covering a lot of the G-Man squads, but I might pop in once in a while and check it out, see how you guys are doing. Uh, I do a lot of replays of other games. I live cast my stuff. Uh, just give it a subscribe. That stuff will go straight to your email, so you'll know when I'm streaming. You'll know when I get a new video. I do the REL form or 4 and 5 recaps with Superfed on a regular basis every Wednesday night. So you can check that out if you're interested. And like I said, I, I stream a lot of games. So if you want to see some stuff, especially if you're a human coach, man, check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya!